Hi, welcome back. This is Cup 2, and today we'll review for Test 2. First, let me give you the question poll that I'll be taking questions from. So, Section 8.2, problems like 1 to 9, and then number 11. Section 8.3, problems 1 to 5, 7, and then 9 to 11. Section 8.4, problems 1 to 8. Section 8.5, problems 1 to 7, and then 8 to 10. Um, I'm not going to put the numerical integration on the test. I think the homework's enough. So we'll just skip over to then 5.6, problems like 2 to 16, and then 19. And finally, section 8.8, .8, problems like 3 to 12, and then 14 to 18. Okay. So again, these are all problems from WebAssign. Although I do encourage you to go to the book and practice exercises there as well. So it's not just about getting a good grade on the test and passing the class. You, you want to have a certain amount of fluency, right? So I think we all know somebody who took uh, like four years of a foreign language in high school but can't speak a word of it. You know, <laughs> don't be like that kind of person. Uh, aim for better, okay? Okay, so anyways, these are web assigned questions. And that's where uh, I get my problems for the test. Okay, so uh, I already put my pretest up there, and as usual, that's what we'll do for the review video. We'll just go through the pretest. So I encourage you to first do the pretest and then come watch the video. So when you do get the pretest, go to the courses, and then 1620, and then I believe it's in course content. Yeah, so there's pretest two. I put up the doc, the uh, uh, MS Word and then the PDF as well. Some people are having trouble with the Word document. So anyways, um, pretest two. So my test is going to be basically an order of the material on the book. I didn't scramble the questions or anything like that. So... Um, the, the first set of questions you see are by parts, so let's get in there and take a look. Problem 1, integral x e to the 5x dx. So we had the acronym LEAT, um, which means uh, you determine which is u by finding the first type of function that fits the bill in the Lee 8 acronym. So uh, in this example, there's two types of functions, uh, x, which is algebraic, and then e to the 5x, which is exponential. And in the acronym, we see algebraic comes first, so that tells me that u is x. And then dv will be e to the 5x. Um, DX. But when push comes to shove, you can actually just, and I never had the acronym, we, we would just guess based off of um, which function was differentiable and which part was integrable. So sometimes you'll get an integral like uh, tan inverse x dx, and uh, you'll have to do by parts on something like that. The, you can't let tan inverse be the dv because you don't know how to integrate it in the first place. So tan inverse is forced. Your hand is always forced. Well, sometimes forced. In problem one, it's not really forced. You can do it or try to do it. And uh, either way, it, it's going to snowball on you if you try it the other way. So um, your integral will get worse and worse as you do by parts. But especially in, in problems like tan inverse, you, you have to make um, your u uh, tan inverse, and then your du, you know, is 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, and then um, v is just x, and then you go from there. So so like I said, I, I mean, the acronym's there, it, but um, sometimes it helps to have kind of an intuitive understanding as well. So anyways, uh, u is x, du is just dx, then v, if you have to do an integral on the margin, there's a, a u sub for 5x, so you'd get a, a fraction of one-fifth at the end of the day. Okay. Um, then we're, we're going to do our by parts. So I don't have the formula memorized, just kind of say, all right, it's u, this times this minus the integral of that times that, right? So it's uh, going to be one-fifths 
x e to the 5x minus uh, the integral of 1 fifth e to the 5x dx. So I'm just going to factor out the 1 fifth. And then I'm going to integrate that thing. So again, there'll be um, a constant of 1 fifth floating about. So you'll end up with 1 20 fifths e to the 5x plus c. OK. All right, problem two, x ln of x plus four dx. So again, this is a by parts, um, setting up your u and dv. The acronym tells us log first, li8, so l for log. That's going to be right here. But honestly, you wouldn't be able to integrate it anyways. Uh, so you couldn't let it be your dv. Okay. Uh, anyways, du then is going to be 1 all over x plus 4 dx. And then our v is going to be x squared over 2. Let's box that off, make our work look nice. So again, it's always this times this minus the integral of that times that. So we get x squared ln of x plus 4 all over 2 minus the integral of, and I can factor out a 1 half of that thing. It'll be x squared all over x plus 4 dx. Okay. So the second integral is a natural log integral, or sorry, it's not. Uh, I apologize. The numerator's degree is higher than the denominator's degree, so you're probably going to do long division. hope you're going to do long division. x plus 4. So you're going x times x plus 4 is x squared plus 4x. And then you're going to subtract these cats. Yeah, x squared minus x squared is 0. Um, then 0 minus 4x is minus 4x. So then minus 4. So minus 4x minus 16. Subtract those. You get a remainder of 16. So I can rewrite my integrand. Uh, you go in this kind of clockwise rotation. x minus 4 plus 16 divided by x plus 4. That's how you rewrite your integrand. So that would be x squared ln of x plus 4 over 2 minus 1 half integral of that x minus 4 plus 16 all over x plus 4 dx. Okay. So this will be an x squared ln of x plus 4 over 2 minus 1 half. And then I go ahead and integrate x squared over 2 minus 4x. You could do a u sub there. It's not necessary, though. It will just end up being uh, 16 ln absolute value of x plus 4. And plus C. Um, you distribute, you know, in the heat of battle, it's okay if you if you want to skip the distribution on the test or something. I'll, I'll be able to figure out your answer, but um, let's go ahead and, and distribute. I think normally people uh, will distribute. So x squared ln of x plus 4 over 2, and then minus x squared over 4 plus 2x minus 8 ln absolute value x plus 4 and then plus your integration constant. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see what we got next. So the next guy is also a by parts. These, these, this is one of the loopers. And this looper it may seem like, well, this is probably a complicated problem you'll never see again. But the loopers come up in real life. Um, later on, you may see them in differential equations. And uh, they, they probably come up in Fourier series and that kind of stuff. Seems like a lot of integrals have or look like that later on. Um, so anyways, you should be able to do this. And uh, so let's take a look. E to the x sine. Let's make it a little harder, right? Let's put like a 3x in here and see what happens. So I'll have u equals sine of 3x and then my dv. So I just go with li8 and that says trig before exponential. So ex dx, v will just be e to the x, and du, the derivative is 3 cosine 3x. There's a chain rule in there, all the way. So that'll be like that. And then this will equal uh, that times that, minus the integral of that times that. I can factor out a 3 there. Uh, I'm going to have to do by parts again. So on the second integral now, I'm going to let u be cosine 3x and dv equals e, uh, e to the x dx. So again, du, we got a negative this time, 3 sine 3x 
dx. And then v will be e to the x. OK, great. Um, there's going to be that looping effect here. So let's kind of uh, prepare ourselves for that phenomenon by rewriting the right-hand side on the left, the left-hand side on the left, and then put the next step uh, following the, the uh, e to the x sine 3x minus 3 integral e to the x cosine 3x dx after um, the equal sign here. So I'll have this times this. That'll be, uh, so, sorry, I'll have to rewrite the e to the x sine x first. So let's do that. And the by parts this time is just replacing um, this integral now. Okay. With, uh, so I have negative 3 times. Um, oh, crap. Sorry. Oh, no, you did not. I, I don't even know what happened there. Look at this. It's like a weird... <laughs> Am I going to have to... I mean, really? I don't know what's going on. Oh, okay. So maybe it's okay now. Jeez. Give me a second. Okay, so it's uh, negative 3 times e to the x cosine 3x uh, minus negative. It'll be plus, then you can factor a 3 integral e to the x um, sine 3x. I'm, I'm still a bit confused by what just happened um, by my, my computer. I swear I've been hacked. There a student five years ago hacked me and has been <laughs> messing with me for, for five years. I... Okay, I'll try the game. My composure here. Okay, um, right. So, so uh, look, people, uh, you have an integral here. This blue, in, uh, this integral in this red box right here, but it's 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 occurring again on the other side, right? It's right here. So what we're going to do is just call that integral i. So we're going to replace it wherever we see it with an i, and then we're going to solve for i. Okay, so that's the deal. Um, so I have i equals e to the x sine 3x minus 3 e to the x cosine 3x minus 9, and that will be an i. Then add the 9i uh, to the other side, so I'll have 10i's. That will equal e to the x sine 3x minus 3 e to the x cosine of 3x. i got to remind myself to evaluate here. Uh, divide both sides by 10. And then evaluate from 0 to 9. So we get i equals e to the 9th sine 27 minus 3e to the 9th cosine of 27 all over 10. And then minus e to the 0, sine of 0 is 0, minus 3e to the 0, that would be 3, um, e to the 0, cosine of 0 is 1, all over 10. And so i will equal e to the 9th sine 27, minus 3e to the 9th cosine 27, all over 10, plus 3 tenths. Okay. Okay, just give me one second. Okay, um, just by the way, I know I changed the, the uh, guy a little bit, but the actual answer for the one that's on the pretest was e to the 9 sine of 9 minus e to the 9 cosine of 9 all over 2 plus 1 half. Okay, so just in case you're, well, you didn't do the problem on the pretest. There it is. Okay, um, number 4 is going to use some of our identities. So we have cosine fourth 5x dx. Um, we need those half angle formulas or power reduction formulas, and you need those memorized. So again, the power reduction formulas, you have um, sine squared theta equals one minus cosine, then you double the angle all over 2. And then if you're dealing with cosine squared, that's going to be 1 plus cosine of 2 theta all over 2. So in this case, um, we have cosine to the fourth, which you could really think of as cosine squared squared, right? And then you could replace the cosine squared 
with a reduction formula cosine, and then you double the 5x to be 10x over 2 squared dx. Um, you're foiling the numerator, so it ended up being 1 plus 2 cosine 10x plus cosine squared 10x all over 4 dx. Then we're going to uh, fillet that guy, so we get 1 fourth plus 1 halves cosine 10x plus 1 fourth cosine squared of 10x. And I'm going to do, so I got to do another power reduction on that term there. So that's going to be 1 plus cosine doubling 10 is 20x all over 2 dx. Okay. Um, then you want to clean this up. So you don't want to integrate bef uh, before you've really simplified. Um, you may be so desperate to get out of the integral that you do this, but it will just It'll just make things worse if you, if you don't simplify. So you want to simplify this. And what I do is kind of first uh, in my head, I butterfly this part of it. So it's really 1 half plus cosine 20x over 2. right? So it's uh, 1 fourth times 1 half plus cosine 20x over 2. And then it, when you distribute the 1 fourth, you'll get plus 1 eighth. Um, plus 1 8 cosine 20x dx. And then you see, okay, I can, I can add the 1 fourth and the 1 eighth. I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom of 1 fourth by 2. And so 2 eighths plus 1 eighth is 3 eighths. And then you get plus 1 half cosine 10x plus 1 eighth cosine 20x and then dx. Okay, and then we're ready to integrate these pieces. Um, so I get 3 eighths x, or 3 eighths co theta plus, and if you do a u sub, you know, on 10x, you're going to end up with du is 10 dx. So your dx is going to be replaced by du over 10. So you're going to have a 1 tenth constant to pull out. So at the end of the day, it'll be 1 20th. Um, and then the integral of cosine is sine. And then plus uh, the constant that be pulled out on the next integral would be 1 20th. So 8 times 20 is 160. And then you have sine of 20x and then plus your integration constant. Okay. Um, number five. So there, that was that whole section, uh, that, that trigonometric section. A lot, a lot of the transformations you're doing is just kind of uh, – pushing back the derivative of u sub. So if you take a u sub to be cosine, you're going to factor back a factor of sine. If you take, do your u sub to be um, cosine, you're going to factor back. Did I just say that? <laughs> if you do a u sub of cosine, you're going to factor back a factor of sine. If you do a u sub to be sine, you're going to factor back a factor of cosine. If you do a, a u sub for secant, you're going to factor back a, fac a factor of secant tan. If you do a u sub for tan, you need to factor back um, a secant squared, right? So um, you also need to then uh, be good at the Pythagorean identity. So again, you need those memorized, and those were sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And then uh, if you divide everything by cosine squared, you get tan squared plus 1 equals secant squared. And then if you divide the first equation by sine squared, you get 1 plus cosecant squared equals, um, or 1 plus cotan squared, sorry, equals cosecant squared. So you need those dudes memorized. And uh, all right, so number 5, we have cosine to the fifth x all over the square root of sine x dx. There's not much you could do with that square root sine x. What, I, what I'm going to do is factor back a uh, factor of cosine. So I end up with cosine to the fourth x all over square root of sine x because I'm going to do a u sub for, for sine, right? I'm going to be able to convert the cosine to the fourth into terms of sine, and then the cosine x dx will be my du, okay? So uh, I got cosine to the fourth, which is really just cosine squared squared, all over the square root of sine x. 
and then cosine x dx. Um, cosine squared from the uh, first Pythagorean identity is equal to 1 minus sine squared. So I got 1 minus sine squared squared all over sine x to the 1 half. And, and so I got the front of the integral all in terms of sine. And then I can go ahead and um, do my u sub. And so I have u is sine x. And then you can see my du is the cosine x dx. Okay. You can solve for dx if you want, but hopefully you see. Do you see? This thing right here is basically just du. I mean, if you did if you did solve for dx, you would get cosine x. Uh, sorry, du over cosine x. But then the cosine x's would just cancel, right? So sometimes you could alleviate your workload a little bit if you see these um, these substitutions. Anyways, we're going to have one minus u squared squared all over u the one half, and then du. Um, to do this guy, it may look like, oh, this is really complicated. Do I need a trig sub or something? No. Um, you're just going to FOIL out the numerator, so you get 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth all over u to the one half, du. And then you're going to butterfly the guy. So I get u to the negative 1 half minus 2u to the four halves minus 1 half, so it's 3 halves plus uh, u to the 8 halves minus 1 halves is u to the 7 halves. U, so I'm just using rules of exponents that are chopping up the uh, fraction you know, in three parts and, and then doing rules of exponents. Um, then you've got power rules. So u to the 1 half plus negative 1 half plus 1 is 1 half divided by 1 half is times 2. Minus two, u to the five halves times two fifths, plus u to the nine halves times two ninths, plus your constant, and then back sub. So we get sine x to the one half minus four fifths sine x to the five halves plus two ninths sine x to the nine halves, and then plus your integration constant. Okay, okay great. Well, number six is another one of these ident the Pythagorean identity type problems. So we have tan x squared dx. So I don't know the antiderivative of tan squared, but you do know the antiderivative of secant squared. Right? So you, you could use the Pythagorean identity to convert tan squared into secant squared x minus 1 dx. And then the integral of secant squared is just tan and the integral of 1 is just x, and then you evaluate. Tan of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3 minus pi over 6. And then minus tan is 0 is 0, and then plugging in 0 for x, you get 0. So it's just that, so 1 over root 3 minus pi over 6. OK, the next two problems are trig integrals. Okay. And so number 7. You have 1 all over 16 minus x squared to the 3 halves dx. So I'm going to do x equals 4. Um, the shape of it suggests sine of x. Okay. Uh, of course, with theta. right? You want to use a theta there. Um, so then get your information first. I, I need to see that triangle stuff. I, I don't know how you would do it without it, to be honest. Um, so dx is going to be 4 cosine theta d theta. And then I need to solve for theta on that first equation. That would be sine inverse of x over 4. Get your triangle. Oops, got a little carried away there on that. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the third side would be 16 minus x squared. OK, now I go back to the integral. So dx is 4 cosine theta d theta, and that's all over 16 minus 4 sine theta squared is 16 sine squared theta to the 3 halves. And then I like to just kind of work with the, um, the this uh, part and simplify that and then put it into the integral so I don't have to rewrite the integral 3,000 times. So this will be equal to. Um, 
16 times 1 minus sine squared theta to the 3 halves. And then that's equal to 16, 1 minus sine squared from the Pythagorean identities is cosine squared. And then 16 to the 3 halves is 16 to the 1 half cubed. 16 to the 1 half is 4, and then I'll just write 4 cubed. And then cosine squared to the 3 halves, multiply 2 times 3 halves, you get 3, so that'll just be cosine cubed. Okay. So I can replace that yellow box with 4 cubed cosine cubed. And I end up with 4 cosine theta d theta all over 4 cubed cosine cubed theta d. Oh, whoops, I don't look here there. So I can factor out uh, 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 16th. Um, cosine theta over cosine cubed is 1 over cosine squared. Okay. I can uh, use reciprocal identities to rewrite 1 over cosine squared as secant squared theta, which is very convenient because I know the antiderivative of secant squared is tan. Do I evaluate? No, plus c. All right. Um, for the last part, then you need to go back to the triangle. Um, tan is the same as opposite over adjacent, so it'll be x all over the square root of 16 minus x squared plus c. And that will do it. Um, let's look at the next character, the next duder right there, numero 8. Um, we have the integral of 3x squared all over 9 plus x squared squared um, dx. Okay, it's another trig sub. And so the form tells us it's a tan, that, that plus that's the only one of the, so there's secant subs, sine subs, and tan subs. And if it's a plus, then you're automatically in the tan. Um, if it's, you know, a squared minus u squared, so in other words, if it's a minus variable, then it's a sine. And if it's a, a positive variable, it's the secant. Um, but anyways, a positive variable with a, like x squared minus 16 would be, would have to be a secant sub. So, Anyways, in this case, we're going to need a 3 tan theta, and then get your dx and your triangle stuff. So this would be 3 secant squared theta d theta. So theta is equal to tan inverse of x over 3 triangle um, opposite over adjacent, and this will be 9 plus x squared square root of, and then we're going to box all that material. Okay, so I get the integral of 3x squared is going to be, and let's put this in terms of exponents, so 3 squared, just so I don't have to pull out my calculator, tan squared theta, and then times dx, which is 3 secant squared theta d theta. So in other words, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 to the 4th power, um, three, 3 to the 4th power up in the numerator. And then the denominator, we have 9 plus 9 tan squared theta squared. So this dude will be 9 times 1 plus tan squared theta squared. And then that dude will be um, 9 secant squared theta from the Pythagorean identities. And then that dude, uh, 9 is really 3 squared. So 3 squared squared is 3 to the fourth. And then we have secant to the fourth theta. So the numerator has 3 to the 4th, the denominator has 3 to the 4th, so the 3s are all canceled out, and you're going to have tan squared theta, secant squared theta, all over secant to the 4th theta, d theta. Okie dokie. So that will be um, the integral of tan squared theta um, all over secant squared theta theta, and that seems like a bridge too far. Um, so I'm going to convert it all into, or transform it all into terms of sines and cosines. So tan squared is the same as sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And then uh, 1 over secant is really cosine, right? So 1 over secant squared is just cosine squared theta, d theta, and then goodbye, goodbye. And so I just end up with the integral of sine squared theta d theta. So that's going to be a power reduction. So 1 minus cosine of 2 theta all over 2 d theta. And then that will equal 
after splitting it up, one half minus one half cosine of two theta d theta. And then we want to integrate each part, so that would be one half theta minus one fourth, because there's a u sub going on with that two theta. And then you'll have a one half um, du to contend with, so there's a one half to factor out, one half times one half is so one fourth. The integral of sine is cos it's the integral of cosine is sine two theta plus c. Sadly, you cannot um, back sub with the triangle using the sine of two theta. We have to convert that into two sine theta cosine theta, which is the other trig identity you need to uh, memorize. So you need the power reductions, the Pythagoreans. And this identity, which they call the, the double angle identity, I think. And finally, once it's in that form, you can start back subbing, right? So it'll be one half theta from above is tan inverse of x over 3 minus one half. And then sine um, from above is high, uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So it'll be x over the square root of 9 minus x squared or 9 plus x squared. And then cosine from above adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 3 over square root 9 plus x squared. I'm just going to leave it like that if you don't mind. That this integral is taking enough time out of my day. Um, I don't think any, anything on the test was that long. Uh, I think the ones on the test are a lot easier, but, um, I mean, I could be wrong. But this one, yeah, this one was kind of a mouthful. So uh, hopefully you were able to navigate that. Um, anyways... Let's move on to number nine. So now, number nine, we're into the world of partial fraction decomposition. Remember, there are four types, um, linear, repeated linear, quadratic, and repeated quadratic. You will see all four types in the future if you take differential equations um, when you get to the Laplace transforms, right? So let's take a look. So you have to know how to do all four of those for the future, for future classes, okay? It's not just me being mean. Blame your differential equations teacher. They're evil. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so anyways, 12x squared plus 2x minus 9. We want to factor the denominator into x squared times x plus 1. So that first factor in the denominator is a repeated linear. So it gets two fractions. You get one fraction for each um, working up to the power of the exponent, right? So if the power is two, you get two fractions. If it was x cubed, you get three fractions. The first fraction, you put x, and then it's kind of like you also put x in the second, but then you increase the exponent. If it was x cubed, you'd go plus x cubed. You remember that? Okay, so anyways, then you need also a fraction for this other linear factor. In the numerators of linear factors, you just put constants. At this point, then, you're going to multiply to get rid of all the fractions. So you got x squared times x plus 1. And so we get 12x squared plus 2x minus 9 equals. Now we have a triple distribution. The first distribution, one factor of x will cancel. Second distribution, x squared will cancel. Third distribution, the x plus 1s will cancel. I'm just going to do equating coefficients. Um, that's a surefire method. No way to screw it up. Well, there's plenty of ways to screw it up, but, you know. Uh, okay. So you're equating the, the coefficients of x squared on the left to the coefficient of x squared on the right. So I get 12 equals a plus c. And then I get um, 2 equals a plus b, the coefficients of x. And then for free, it looks like they're going to give me that b is equal to negative 9. Okay. All right, so I'll make life easier. I have 2 equals a minus 9, so a is 11. And then 12 equals 11 plus c, so c apparently is 1. Ain't that nice? Okay, so now we can rewrite our integral. Um, integral of 11 over x. Let's rewrite the second term, negative 9 over x squared, as negative 9x to the negative 2. So we can go ahead and integrate. And then you get 1 over x. 1 over x plus 1, excuse me. Sorry. Um, 
right. So 11 ln absolute value x minus 9 uh, power rule negative 1 over negative 1. Plus, you could do a u sub here, but again, it's not necessary because there won't be any constants to deal with. So you get ln, 11 ln x, absolute value x, plus 9 over x, plus ln, absolute value x plus 1, plus c. That should do you. Um, let's go on to the other. So the biparts problem. This one we have to evaluate on top of all of our other problems in life. So we get x plus 1 all over x cubed plus x dx. Okay, so let's get the partial fractions, the, the decomposition done. Um, oh, let's, let's factor, right, Dave? Okay, so I want to factor an x out of that, that thingamajigs. So, so x times x squared plus 1. So what do we got? We, we have a, a single factor of a linear and then a single... Um, quadratic factor. Uh, in the numerator of linears, you're always putting constants, but for the quadratics, you have to put a linear, right? So you're going to go, um, well, let's go alphabetic order, bx plus c. Okay, uh, and then it's business as usual, so I'm going to multiply both sides, get rid of the denominators. So multiply by x times x squared plus 1. Over here, same spiel. Um, so on the left side, I get x plus 1. On the right side, I have to double distribute. So I get a times x squared plus 1 plus, looks like bx plus c times x. After all is said and done, I'm going to equate coefficients again. So on the left, I see that I need an x squared term. So I'm just going to write 0x squared plus 1x plus 1, and then distribute on the right, I got ax squared plus a plus bx squared plus cx. Okay, okay. So on the left, I have 0 equals um, a plus b. Then 1 equals, for free, I'll, I'll know c is 1. And then for free, I know a is 1. These were pretty easy. Um, sure. I'm going to plug a equals 1. Uh, into the first equation. Seems like I made a mistake somewhere. I can feel it. I you know, get a sense for it. Um, no, I'm good. All right, so anyways, uh, 1 plus b. So b is negative 1, and then that's all done. So our integral from 1 to 3 will become um, a, which is 1, over x, plus b, which is negative 1, x, plus c, which is 1, all over x squared plus 1. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, that second integral, uh, uh, sorry, the, there's two terms in that integral. I'm going to, um, you know, integrate each piece. But that second term, I need to uh, butterfly it. So I need to chop it up into two fractions and then integrate the two fractions in order to get the job done. So I have the first one is 1 over x dx, and then uh, I can factor out minus integral x all over x squared plus 1 dx, and then finally plus the integral I'm running out of room, the integral of, where are we at, 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. So the first and the last integrals there are uh, Elementary. The first one's ln absolute value x. The last one's at part tan. The, the middle guy, I need a u sub. It will turn into a natural log. Which will du 2x dx. So dx is equal to du over 2x. And I will go ahead and integrate. The first dude is ln absolute value x minus the integral of x over u times dx, which is now du over 2x plus arc tan, or if you rather, tan inverse of x plus c. Moving on, uh, ln of x minus 1 half. The x's cancel out very nicely. And then have integral 1 over u to u. Oops, and there's no plus c here, guys. So I, this is a definite integral. That was a major snafu. So I need a bracket right there. And this will be tan inverse x. 
So that would be ln absolute value of x minus one half ln absolute value of u. But back subbing will have x squared plus one. And then plus your tan inverse x evaluated from one to three. I don't know how pretty that's going to be, but we'll see. So the ln of three minus one half ln of nine plus one, which is ten, plus tan inverse of three. So I can't do much with that. Minus ln of one is just zero. Minus one half ln of one squared is one, plus one is two, absolute value of two is two. And then plus tan inverse of one is just pi over four. Okay. And it don't look like I can do much more with that. Let's just leave it as this exact number. It's often better than an approximation for us math people. Not that I'm a math person. I guess I suppose I, I deserve to be thought of as a math person at this point to some extent. Um, I guess we all are math people at this point. Once you get the count two, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm kind of a math person now, I guess. Um, anyways, we got, we got ln3. Uh, I'm just making sure my answer is right. Minus ln. So let's see if I got it on ln3. Minus ln of one, one tenth, the tan inverse, the pi over four. And okay, we're good. Um, my first degree was in music, believe it or not. I did not start in math. So I often have a hard time seeing myself as a math person, but so I don't mean anything bad by saying I'm not a math person. You can be a math person if you want to. Um, I am just me. Uh, anyways, the limit of sine of 5x over sine of 7x. So for limits, this, this is the indeterminate form section. And there's basically the, the four types. There's the you know normal Lapitals, and then there's the three special indeterminate forms where you have to do some sort of transformation in order to uh, put it into a Lapitalable form and uh, figure out the limit. But when you're dealing with limits, and just in general, you first try a substitution. So if you plug in zero, you get sine of five times zero, which is sine of zero, which is um, zero. In the numerator and then in the denominator likewise. Zero over zero form is indeterminate and it is lapitalable. So you can't always do lapitals, right? You can only do lapitals if it's zero over zero or some sort of infinity over infinity. Okay? It's only those cases. You just can't pull it out of the hat every day. But anyways, once you do figure that out, then it's just a matter of taking derivatives at the top and bottom. Again, this is not the quotient rule. And then you try the substitute away again, and of course cosine of zero is just one, so you end up with five sevens, and all is good. Um, remember, you can do multiple lapitals if you need to, but um, let's look at number 12, where we start to see these kind of other forms that, that sometimes we encounter. Um, so we have uh, x to the fourth times sine of two over x to the fourth. Uh, the first term, the x to the fourth, if you plug in like 10, 100, 1,000, a million, that's going to go to infinity. And then um, if you're plugging 10, 100, 1,000 into sine of 2 over x to the fourth, you get sine of 2 over something really, really huge. So that would be sine of 0, basically. And so you get infinity times 0. Okay, so you need to transform this. And that transform is usually a matter of taking reciprocals or just uh, changing it into a fraction, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite this as, uh, and let, let me, I'm gonna have to take the derivative with Lapitals. Well, okay, I won't get carried away. We'll just one thing at a time, Mr. Stroop. All right, there you go. Uh, and the denominator, I'm gonna put one all over x to the fourth. And now in the numerator, you, you have that zero still, um, sine of two over infinity basically is sine of zero, which is zero. And then the denominator, it's one over infinity, which is L over infinity form, which is also zero. So now we're in a Lapitalable situation. Um, just to make my life a little easier, I'm gonna rewrite this so I can do power rules a little bit easier in my head. So I got two X to the negative four all over X to the negative four. And then I can do my derivatives a little bit easierly. So I'll have cosine of 2x to the negative 4, and then chain rule, so times negative 8x to the negative 5. And then the denominator, 
negative 4 x to the negative 5. So there's a nice cancellation here. That's just equal to 2. So you have then um, limit as x goes to infinity of 2 cosine. And now we go back over to this other form. And if you put the take the limit of this, the limit of 2 over x to the 4, that's going to be 2 over infinity, which is 0. The cosine of 0 is 1, so you just have 2. And all of a sudden, done. Okay, okay great. Um, 13 is one of these exponential types. I think this one's pretty easy. Make sure you, you take a look at the other problems in my question poll. Um, so I have the limit as x goes to infinity. I'm going to rewrite it as an exponential and then move the limit into the exponent and use the, the, law, the power rule for logarithms. So I'll have ln of x to the 2 over x, and then I can rewrite that as e to the limit as x goes to infinity, bringing the, the, the power um, 2 all over x out of the exponent and put it in front of the log. I get um, 2 over x ln x. And uh, that thing right there is kind of a zero times infinity form. But it's pretty easy to rewrite as a fraction just by rewriting it as 2 ln x all over x. And then in that form, it's infinity over infinity. Okay. So now you could do L'Hopital's up there in the exponent. So you get the, the uh, derivative of 2 ln x is just going to be 2 over x. And then the derivative of x is just 1. So you just get the limit of 2 over x as x goes to infinity, which is 2 over something huge, which is basically 0. So you get e to the 0, which is uno, right? All right. Let's play uno. There's some ma uh, cool mathematics in that game, uno, people don't talk about. It. It's kind of related to the Collatz conjecture, if you're interested in those kind of number theory or um, combinatorical type problems. If you like combinatorics, you can find you can look up the Euler project. Um, it's kind of a one of one of my students told me about it. Um, one of one of my really good students, and uh, you go there and it's basically just a bunch of problems that people do, and uh, they they go through. I think there's a little bit of computer programming usually, but you can still do them uh, using not uh, using your your uh, brain, not just the computer. I think it's the Euler project, but I don't know. So if you're interested in that sort of thing. Anyways, let's look at 14. So 14 is one of these infinity minus infinity types. So we got 32 all over x squared minus 16 minus x over x minus 4. Um, you know, make sure it actually is of these indeterminate types, and it is. It's infinity minus infinity. And then uh, I'm going to try to turn these two terms into one, right? So the denominator here is x minus 4, x plus 4 in that first fraction. And then the second fraction, I need to find a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x plus 4. Okay, And then I turn it into one fraction. So I get the limit of 32. The second uh, numerator will be minus x times x plus 4. Distributing the minus x will give you minus x minus 4x, minus x squared, excuse me. And then all over, um, we might as well factor that back out, x squared minus 16. And then we're going x to 4 from the right. So um, the, now that you've done that, it actually turns into a L'Hopital-able form. So if you plug in 4, get 32 minus 16 minus 16, which is 0. And then downstairs will be 16 minus 16, which is 0. And then um, you say to yourself, well, I'll just do L'Hopital's and see what happens next. So the derivative of 32 is 0. The derivative of minus x squared is minus 2x. The derivative of minus 4x is minus 4 all over 2x. And then you're going to do a substitution, uh, see where you are. So it would be minus 8 minus 4 is minus 12 all over 8. And then simplify for me, please. And you get negative 3 halves. Um, next two parts um, are uh, these improper integrals. Improper integrals will come up again in differential equations, of course. So you need to be able to do them as when you get to them in differential equations, it'll more, more than likely be harder uh, once you're there. 
Anyways, the approach to these is to replace kind of the uh, unusual part of the integral with a limit. So the unusual part for us is probably that infinity symbol. So I'm going to just replace it with a B. And uh, then it's kind of business as usual on the integral. So I do a power rule. So you get 4x to the negative 1 fifth plus 1 is negative 1 fifth plus 5 fifths, which is 4 fifths, divided by 4 fifths, the same as multiplying by the reciprocal 5 fourths. So I get the limit of 5x to the 4 fifths, and then I'm evaluating from 1 to b. So putting all the bells and whistles in, I get the limit as b goes to infinity of 5b to the 4 fifths minus 5, 1 to the 4 fifths, which is just 5. And then, of course, that's going to be an infinity minus L form, which will equal infinity. Um, if you don't believe me, you know, you could plug in B values going to infinity and you do it strategically. So put in 10 to the 5th, 10 to the 100th, 10 to the thousandths, uh, or 10 to the 5th, 10, uh, 10 to the 5th, 100 to the 5th, 1,000 to the 5th, because you put in uh, numbers like that, they, those that sequence is going to infinity. But when you plug it in for b, then that fifth power is going to multiply to the times four fifths and just give you four. So you get ten to the fourth, hundred to the fourth, a thousand to the fourth. In other words, five times ten to the fourth minus five, five times a hundred to the fourth minus five. And you see that that's just getting huge. And then the minus five doesn't really affect anything, so it's just infinity. And then you tell me, is it convergent or divergent? And if it goes to infinity, it is divergent. All right, so let's look at number 16. 16 is the, uh, the discontinuity problem. So make sure you identify the discontinuity in the uh, integrand. So here it's at 0. And the way we did it is you're kind of um, finding the integral to some value b that's close to the discontinuity, like right here, and then you're letting the limit kind of push that value over to the discontinuity, right? So the b value is going to be going to 0, and we need to locate the, the direction. So if your Riemann person is right here, that person's coming in from the positive direction. So you need to indicate that on your limit. And so uh, replace the bad limit with the b value and put the other one as is. And this one's pretty simple, 4x to the negative 3 dx. Then you're doing a power rule. So 4x to the negative 2 um, divided by negative 2 evaluated. Um, simplify a little bit. So you get negative 2 all over x squared. And then put all the bells and whistles in, so you get limit as b goes to 0 from the right of negative 2 over b squared. So I'm going from b to 1. Oops, so that would just be negative 2 over 1 squared, which is just negative 2 minus um, what will become plus 2 all over the b squared. Um, this will be an L plus infinity form, so I'll just equal infinity. All right. So if you're putting in, uh, again, the, the B value, here's 0. I'm coming in from the right. So in your little table, well, I guess we have B, and then uh, the output is 2 over B squared. You know, you're thinking 0 0.1, which is like 2 over 1 tenth squared, which will be 2 over 1 over 100, which is 200. Right? So already it's pretty big. And then if you just keep getting closer and closer to that, you're going to see it's going to get super big and go off to infinity, right? So already it's pretty big. And it's going to go to infinity. And then you need to tell me, is that convergent or divergent? And if, if it's like this, it's divergent. If it's just a number, then, of course, it's convergent, and you're good to go. So make sure you are going back and looking at exercises in our question pool for rehearsal. And uh, that will do it for me. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.